Hi everyone, so in today's video I am chatting about things that I wish I knew before having sexual reassignment surgery. Um, these are just a little list of things that I've compiled uh, that I think would be helpful for people who are considering the surgery. Um, because everyone always talks about the good points and there is a lot of good things about having it but also there is a lot of important things that I think people should know and I would like it if someone had done a video like this before I had my surgery just so that you could prepare for everything that um, is going to arise because it is a big surgery and it is a big thing to go through. So these are just a list of things that I wish that I knew before having the surgery. Okay, so the first one is that the recovery is really long. Um, this is one that people probably could guess. Um, it is a really long recovery, but I think you've also got to think about what that means and how that will affect your life. Um, so for me, around the time having the surgery, I like to go on long walks. Well, not that I, I basically, I lived in a flat near the city centre, so I walked everywhere. Um, I didn't really use much public transport or I didn't drive at the time um, because my flat was in the city centre. I just pretty much walked everywhere. Um, but after the surgery, I found that I would get quite painful and I'd have to sit down on benches occasionally. Just for like the first maybe three to six months, um, like I couldn't be as active as I was. And I think I didn't really think about that at the time, um, just how long the recovery is. I, I kind of just was thinking about, I think as well, probably a lot of people are the same, that they just think so much about the actual surgery, um, having it done and, not they don't really think about how long the recovery afterwards is going to be because it does probably take up to six months before you're fully feeling back to normal um and can be as active and everything uh so just be prepared for that so the next thing that i wish i knew before having srs is that the dating world is different nowadays um basically 10 years ago when i had the op it was really hard to it was harder to find someone um, a lot more men were closed-minded with regards to dating a trans woman. Nowadays, people are a lot more open-minded. Um, it kind of felt back then that you were kind of pushed to go on these sort of fetish dating websites, um, which wasn't always really, I mean, it, it, like I've got nothing against people that are into that stuff, but for me personally, I was just looking for a nice wholesome boyfriend so it kind of felt like it was harder to find that. Nowadays there's dating apps, there was some dating websites back then, um, general ones but as I say more people were not really open to dating trans women um, um, so I didn't really think that it would prog progress so much within 10 years um, so that's something you have to consider as well as like in 10 years from now it might be even more open-minded because um, I actually have a theory myself that there's maybe up to 25% of people who, or 25% of the population is actually bisexual or would go with, you know, people in between gender sort of thing, like trans or, you know, maybe I should say pansexual. So maybe like 25% of the population is pansexual. Um, I really think there's a lot more higher numbers than people like to say. I think a lot of people have been conditioned to kind of like, suppress those feelings in themselves um and yeah i get people can predominantly be attracted to a gender but they kind of just go with that and say that they're straight when really i think there's a lot of people that are more you know curious or just open-minded just like happy to get to know someone and fall in love with who the person is inside or be attracted to who the person is as a whole rather than thinking about labels. So yeah, you've just got to be prepared for society moving on. If you're having issues, if you're have, you've got to make sure you're having the operation for the right reasons and not just because you're feeling pressured by society. It's about what's in yourself. And if I'm like unhappy with myself and having gender dysphoria with like my body, um, because I had issues with, you know, getting naked and, and seeing myself naked and things. So I definitely think that the operation is right for me. There's also a lot of men out there who only want a pre-op um, and that can be a bit different to get or a bit harder to get used to because um, I've had I've had men that I've met on dating apps ghost me when they find out, find out that I'm post-op and that I've had the operation which is a bit weird because before um, when I was pre-op I just kind of felt that like 
a lot of men were rejecting me because I was trans and I always thought it's because I've got a and then being post-op it's happening the other way around like men are rejecting me because I don't have a penis and that's when you've got to think that like now society's moved on people are more open-minded um and it's it's fine I mean I think at the end of the day as long as the right person loves you for who you are that's all that matters um and I hope one day I will meet the right person who will just love me for who I am but sometimes you know when that happens to you on dating apps and it's someone that you 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 kind of like and you know that they were looking for a girl with a it can be a little bit disappointing you're like oh you know but at the end of the day you know everyone wants to impress someone that they like but when it comes down to it you've got to think of yourself as well like you've got to think about what you want not what another person wants you to be so that's why like i'm happy that you know i've had the operation because i've done it for myself i think most of the guys that you know did ghost me when they find out that i'm post-op they were just looking for fun or being curious anyway like i don't think they were serious about a relationship um or like you know i think they, it was just like a purely fantasy for them i think anyone that is serious about getting to know you would wouldn't mind because the vast majority of men that do like trans also like women so the fact that you've got isn't really going to be a bad thing it's going to be it means they're still going to like you no matter what um but it can still be a little bit you know different to get used to and just be prepared for that but the next thing that i wish i knew is how much of a chore dilating is so in the beginning um you have to dilate three times a day and dilating is just what you do to keep the your new um your new area in good shape and just keep it working how it should um so with the dilating it's at the beginning you have to do it three times a day it takes up a lot of your time it's for 20 minutes each time it does eventually become less and less i think now 10 years on i do it about once every three weeks there is different things online about how often people should be doing it. Um, I generally think every three weeks works for me. Sometimes I go a little bit longer, maybe four weeks between them. Um, I find that works for me and I'm happy doing that. Um, so it's not that often, but it does still, it is still a chore when, chore when it comes around and you're just like, oh, I need to do this. It's always, for me, it always seems to happen the week. I'm always really busy with other things. And some of you all know what it's like being a girl. Like you've got a, in between doing your, your fake tan, your nails, washing your hair. It's just like another chore that you, that's added on to the list of things that, that you need to do to self maintenance kind of things. So um, yeah, that's just something that like, I'll have to do for the rest of my life and same with every uh, post-op trans woman that's had the operation something that you need to continually do so that's something you know you that I wish I knew before is just to consider like how much of a chore that is um because sometimes if you've got plans you've got to try and set a day that you can you can do it and make the time to do it uh but yeah it's as I say because it's only once every few weeks or once a month now it's not doesn't take up that much of your time but it's still something that you you need to think about and continually remember to do and that leads me to the next thing is I just always try to keep a positive mindset because there can be a lot of people um like haters and things like that not so much now but I when I first started out YouTube um I think it was in 2013 I was one of the first transgender YouTubers there wasn't really many around um back then so literally like I could go on in any video that where I spoke about translated subjects would probably get about at least 30k views um so it was quite good now there's a lot more transgender youtubers um and it's different now but back then that I had those types of views and the, the only thing that comes along with that is more hateful comments and especially because you know years back people felt more comfortable to say things like that there is I mean I do get a lot less haters now so far um but I know there is a lot of hate comments out there on YouTube I've seen them on other people's channels but I did tend to get quite a lot and you know that's one thing that you've got to try and be positive because it's one of the reasons I stopped doing my channel back then is just 
I couldn't really deal with the hay. I would, if I got a really nasty comment, it would ruin my day. Um, and then now I'm a bit more thick skinned. But back then it would literally the full day I would think about what the person said and I just thought, you know, it's not, and it was so accessible as well because I'd just be like having a notification on my phone, having a good day, check my phone, read the comment, be like, wow, that person's really nasty. Didn't expect that. Um, so that was like, obviously that's maybe a whole different subject, but it's just to kind of like have a positive mindset because you might have come across people who will say negative things. Like people might try to say, people would say to me, oh, you're still not a real woman. That's one of the most common things. And it's like, well, you know, I'm just doing me and it's, it's, you know, it's basically, no one's denying biological sex. Most people, most transgender people don't. Like I know how I was born. Let's just celebrate what I, who I am now. The next thing that I wish I knew is that it's not a cure-all. So you will still suffer from gender dysphoria at times. Um, although it, it did help me a lot with things, you know, before um, the operation, I probably didn't shower as much as I should have and things like that because I just didn't like being naked and I felt really self-conscious and just felt really depressed when, you know, my body was a typical male body. Like in my parents' house, the mirror, there was a mirror right next to the shower. So every time I would shower, I would see this naked body um, that was male and I just would make me depressed. So that's probably why I avoided showering at times. Um, and just little things like that, like it has helped a lot with dysphoria, but you will still have times where you feel down and you still have gender dysphoria about things and about yourself. I know that I do. Um, and yeah, you just got to remember that it's helped you, but also before having the operation, you've got to remember that um, anything you're feeling inside, any mental problems, it's not going to totally cure them. So as I said, you know, I suffered a lot with anxiety. Um, and I still had that a lot after it. And the, as I say, with the mentioned before with the post-traumatic stress. Um, so although I was fixing some issues, I created other ones. And I think you've got to, I think you've got to work on your mental well-being and your mental health first um, and just be in the right place. There's no rush to have the operation. Just have it uh, when you're ready, work on your mental health first. I think um, there was, at least there was back 10 years ago, there was a kind of idea in the media that you would have the operation and it would be like waving a magic wand and that all your problems would be away and that you would just be this, living your life as a woman with no issues and there was no kind of anxieties or trans-related issues that it would just cure all of them, but that's not the case. They're still going to be there after the operation. You might feel better and more happier in yourself but there are still issues that might be there it's not going to cure everything it's not going to cure the gender dysphoria completely um so that's something that i wish i knew because i did kind of naively think that it was kind of going to be like a magic wand being waved and that i would just live my life like a normal regular woman and not have to think about being trans anymore which just as i say it was quite naive because yeah you've still got a you've still got to deal with whatever's inside all your emotional issues and things um so yeah that's one thing that i that i wish i knew this video is not me trying to say i regret it or anything like that like i just think that any major life decision is rarely going to be all positive it's going to have some cons or some things that you need to consider i would have still went for the operation probably um it's just things that i that would have been helpful to know beforehand just to prepare for um and i think there shouldn't be a big rush to have the operation either like as i say just work on your your mental health and well-being first of all um and then have the operation at when you're ready or at the right time if you think it's right for you so thanks for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.